Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. My name is Jason. So I'm going to be going through really quickly on the latest updates to 1.1 preview version two. So essentially uh, the changes that have happened since 1.0 are numerous. Uh, we have hundreds, and I mean that quite literally, hundreds of updates since 1.0. Um, if you want to go check on all the things that have been coming in, please check out the Git repository. You can find that linked on the main page. So I've been going through and releasing uh, versions and uh, different groups of the armor uh, that I've been developing over the past year. Uh, so it's been going since about June, uh, July time frame that I've been building and and releasing this armor into the game um, and balancing things out. What I'll be playing through right now is the uh, survivor version of the game. And let me go ahead and just uh, die really quick. I'll go ahead and jump over to a morning, a morning uh, version here. Essentially, let me go ahead and just describe some of the features that are built into the mod so far. So for if you've been following uh, version 1.1 pre version 2 should contain around 107 new armor pieces into the game that have been completely balanced and set up in a way that you should be able to now access them in the game through the game's loot. Uh, so as you go through the game, the wor game world, you'll find some of these pieces that have hidden inside the world. Uh, once 1.1 official releases, I'll have more details about where you can find some of those armors and what each one of those armors does. Uh, but for now, I want you guys to be able to explore and go find some of those pieces and get to give some of that early feedback on your thoughts uh, before I kind of give away where most of that is hidden. Uh, but what I can tell you is, is that I have very purposely hidden a lot of this armor into the world uh, so that it has that uh, unique feel that before the armor was just kind of randomly spawned into the world. This is designed to where as you go into dark zones, as you go into interiors, as you mess, out with, uh, mess around with different groups of NPCs, the armor that you find uh, is based on who you're interacting with or how difficult the area is. So I have new legendary armor. So uh, altogether, I think it's probably in the ballpark uh, of around, I would say, 50 to 60 new legendary armors um, that are in the game now. Uh, and so what the what that is, is that each armor set has its own legendary versions uh, attached to it, whether those be torsos or helmets. Um, and so as you go through the game, you'll be able to find those different balanced ones. So uh, let's do a couple of examples here. So for example, I'm still trying to get access to the naming conventions inside the game. I do not have access to the names. So I apologize, you won't see any names currently on the character or on these new armors, uh, but you will be able to go in there and set those and mess around with those uh, inside the game world and, uh, and inter interact with those. Uh, so this is an example. So this is one of the ones that the visuals are not quite there yet. A lot of it's placeholder while I'm continuing to look at how I can get custom textures into the game. Um, but essentially you have this idea of different armor sets that at least they have some red on them so you can convey that they're more towards the renegade group. Uh, again, I'm trying to look at new ways that I can inject color or different things onto the armor sets. These are not finals by any means, uh, but this will allow you to kind of get an idea of what these looks lo look like. Uh, so as you go through the world and you battle different bosses, you should find different armor sets that will allow you to take on uh, different characteristics of those armor sets. So I have tried to balance these out into the world to where you do have tank sets, melee sets, healer armor, legendary healer armor, legendary tank armor, uh, and all the different groups are accounted for. So... Uh, what I'm currently working on is this idea that as you wear these different armors, uh, you, they have different classifications. So coming up soon, you will be able to see new classifications of armor, whether those be heavy armor, uh, medium armor, or light armor. And what this does inside the game, mean, it means that uh, your ability to jump higher, your ability to move throughout the world uh, begins to become limited the more armor you wear. So as you're starting to go through the world and you find different armor sets, if you find like a pair of gloves uh, or a headset or something like that, then it's going to only affect you a little bit. Um, but as you start to find those very heavy armor pieces, the torso pieces, 
Um, I've tried to balance those to where they start to affect your ability to jump. They slow you down a little bit um, inside the world. And so the less armor that you wear, uh, the faster you'll be. So essentially these uh, vanilla game armor sets that allow you, uh, that look like they're made for parkour, essentially I've tried to latch onto that, that these are meant for, you know, jumping higher and running and climbing faster, doing wall runs and uh, gliding and all these other features that are in the game for parkour sake. Um, with this heavy armor, at, you know, just similar to where if you were wearing heavy armor in the actual uh, real world, uh, you would be more limited in your ability to climb and get around the world. And so an example of that, we'll go ahead and uh, glide over to this other building. You can see that, so this is a, a tier three uh, glider set. So you can see that I'm just kind of gliding around the world. I have a lot of control. I'm able to move fairly easy and the stamina doesn't drain very, very fast. Well, if we go in here and we'll throw on the armor sets, so we'll go ahead and throw on uh, these torso sets and then we'll go on and throw some heavy armor on, get one of the better uh, helmets along with the boots. So now that I have these heavy armors on, you can see as I jump, um, my jump height has been limited, so I'm not able to jump as high. You can still get around the world fairly easy. You just have to consider uh, using other things to get higher. Um, you might not be able to reach and climb all the way up without struggling. And so the idea here is, is that you do have to consider what you're wearing as you move throughout the world. Um, if you want to glide, for example, uh, so you can use your glider, but when you're using your <laughs> when you're using your glider, you can see that it falls much faster. It uses stamina much faster. And so the idea behind that is if you're using heavy armor, it's to really get you to the ground and make sure that you can get down and not fall to your death kind of thing. I'm still working on options for how I want to interact with the world with the rope swing. Uh, and so that is still being actively set up. Um, but I do want to make sure that those are being set up correctly to where you're not really able to just kind of zip around the city uh, like you normally can uh, when you have that rope uh, hook as well. So once you actually start getting into the world, you'll see that I've gone through and I've actually updated a lot of the spawn information in the game. Uh, so there are quite a few groups in the world now uh, that are battling and warring as you go through the city. So this changes as you're using the different types. So there's three different difficulties here. Uh, you have the casual survivor, you have survivor, and you have ultimate survivor. Each one of these I've tried to balance uh, to where you have different conditions throughout the world, more difficulty and more challenges as you go through the city. I'm still encountering a lot of little spawn uh, bugs and considerations with the spawn tables. I am actively working on this to try to better understand how they have some things set up as far as um, the spawn groups and why there appears to be a thing where it, it'll select one specific group uh, and it really just starts to churn those out. out. So for example, um, adding the ability for there to be banshees, goons, different groups throughout the city during the day, you will encounter uh, in some areas uh, a large group of chargers, for example. And this is where, for some reason, the spawn system kind of gets attached to one character type uh, and then just kind of doubles down and spawns that character more rapidly. Um, so I am, like I said, I am still trying to figure that out and figure out what I can do to limit that. Um, but as you go through the city, you should start to see better events. So I have continued to, uh, or encounters rather, so I've continued to set up those encounters uh, to where you should get more diversity. You should get more uh, variety of different groups battling inside the city. Uh, they should look fairly loaded down and ready to take you on. Uh, if you have caused damage to the world, like for example, if you have fought the PK groups at one period, um, you'll be remembered in that area now. So as you continue to fight that group, um, if you went, and for example, with this save game, I actually went and I've been killing a large number of PK uh, to get their armor. So as I travel around those regions, uh, I will continue to get uh, more and more PK attacking me if I'm back in those same regions. Uh, along with some of the updates, so this final update for the heavy armor. So the reason that you want to wear this heavy armor and what I was kind of trying to show as we moved around the city is that your damage is much less. Um, so the higher and more quality armor you find, 
uh, that's heavy armor, uh, the better resistance you, you get in the world. So you can see there, I got shot, and it didn't even uh, it didn't even make it through that armor. So if I continue to get hit, you'll see that uh, it does start to build up. So as more and more groups start to hit me, uh, obviously you can still take damage. It's just the amount of damage that you can take is much less uh, than if you do not have the heavy armor. I'm going to continue to try to balance this to where uh, as you pick up things like light armor or medium armor, there are perks for every set that I'm releasing into the world. Um, so you can continue to try to get different sets uh, and get different perks. Now, because I don't have access to the naming conventions for this, I'm not able to clearly state what every armor set currently does in game. But what I'm trying to set up is actually make it to where if you go to the website, the Nexus site, uh, you'll have a detailed list of what each armor set does in game. And so you'll be able to determine based on that, um, you know, which armor sets do what and kind of a general overview. Uh, as I get access to the uh, actual names inside the game, I plan on making that easier for you guys to understand and read, you know, exactly what these different armor types do. And so I do apologize for the delay there. And uh, looks like I will need to continue to balance out the chargers here. Um, I promise they're at such a low percent that they're supposed to be set up to where they're only supposed to be spawning in super rarely. But um, with that bug, it, it appears that um, it does uh, it does cause this. Now, I have seen where you fast travel through the city. It kind of resets some of the code. Uh, and so sometimes it will clean that up. Uh, early on when I was first modding, some users mentioned that they were never able to find things like uh, screamers and, and that kind of thing in the world. Uh, and a lot of that was based off of where you had to kind of reset the area code um, as you move through the world. And so uh, let's talk about a couple of new features. So um, along with that, I've rebalanced some of the internal cells. So some people mentioned with the uh, version of the uh, interior cells that came with 1.13, uh, a lot of the special infected were no longer on the interiors. Uh, I went through and fixed that, so you should uh, not only get special infected inside of there, uh, but you should also uh, get a new feature, which is basically I've been working very hard on trying to get the uh, zombies that are higher up in the... Oh, that scared me. Uh, for the zombies that are higher up in the game, uh, they should start to watch you now. So I've written some custom behavior code for the zombies to where they will work harder to try to get to your location. And so they should start to watch you even from inside the interiors now. Um, they shouldn't always just be uh, hanging out inside there. And what the end result of that will be is that you will get groups uh, up above that will start to move towards the edges. And so you will now have random groups of zombies uh, falling from the uh, interiors up ahead. Um, and so something to just continue to play with. Let me know your guys' feedback. Let me know how that's going uh, for the night scenes. Um, so as you can see right now, the world is still pretty dangerous. I've tried to limit the number of zombies during the day. There are still more zombies than there would be normally. But the idea here is that as you're moving through the world, um, you're continuing to see large amounts of zombies. So the world is still difficult. You're still trying to find a pathway. And then when you get to nighttime, it's still flooded. Now you still have access to the configuration file and I'm gonna conclude this video by showing you how to access that configuration file. So please make sure if you're skipping through the video uh, to stay tuned and if you read in the video description, I'll have more of that information of where to skip to for that actual information. So the biters, I've redone a lot of their code to where they're no longer doing uh, the like stand there and grab upwards motion. If anything, they are just constantly trying to get to the player's position. A lot of this helps in a lot of situations of where uh, the band or the biters themselves are not as reactive in the world and they're just kind of hanging out and standing around. Now you should see a very large amount of biters moving throughout the world and taking on everyone that they see. So they're, they're continuing to be kind of like a plague and they're sweeping over everything and the human characters are trying to combat that. So if we switch over to night, I wanna show you guys some of the new features I've built into nighttime. Go ahead and take some of this armor off really quick. That will help process here.
once we get to nighttime, uh, what I've set up is basically before I've been continuing to play with a couple of different code lines, looking for different possibilities for unique uh, uh, AI and making them more interesting inside the world. What I've stuck with right now is this idea that, especially if you're playing ultimate, is that you should now have a very rare number of volatiles moving throughout the city. But what I've done is, is made them to where as they move through the city, they are actively searching for the player on the rooftops now, as well as the ground. Uh, so they now have code written into them to where you are more likely to run into them higher up than you are on the ground. That doesn't mean they won't be on the ground. It just means that you ne now need to be worried uh, about more of them traversing the rooftops uh, than the ground areas. So as we go ahead and let this uh, load up, so we need to go ahead and wait till it turns to nighttime, we'll talk about a couple of the other things. So before with the code, um, basically when a chase began, normally you would have some code uh, that would lock on for certain uh, AI types um, that would, in the world, you would have certain AIs really target the player and chase them. Um, with the invention of the mod and, and as it progressed, I've been trying to go through and uh, so as a screamer will scream or a howler rather, you will get a random chance that different special infected will spawn into the world. So the longer there are screamers in the area or howlers rather, and they're continuing to do their initial scream, the higher chance of special infected coming into that area. When you encounter a volatile, there's a higher chance that when they first see you, they will do a scream that calls and summons other volatiles. And the way I've set this up is, is that it will spawn other volatiles into that area, but they won't necessarily lock onto the player. They'll start to search the area for you as well. Um, I'm continuing to play with this to see if that's something like with Ultimate, to where if you're playing on Ultimate Survivor, um, then it they always lock onto you. So if a volatile screams, you need to just run as fast as you can and try to clear that area. So all of this has always been set up to where if you get outside of a certain range, uh, then the world resets uh, as long as you're not in a chase. Uh, the same is true of if you're in a chase, but when you're in, a, in an actual chase, you need to get to a UV zone or a base uh, for that to actually stop. So you can see here, I've also got set up to where the chargers are also doing a random walk. Uh, so they are searching the areas for you as well, uh, which is also why you start to feel like there's more of them is that they're also kind of patrolling the cities during the day. Um, so as you're continuing to fight uh, the infected, so if you encounter a screamer now and uh, they scream, like I mentioned, you have a chance of seeing other random special infected, but I've also changed the code to where if a screamer screams, uh, or a howler rather, uh, you will have every biter in the area notice you're there. So before they didn't have a lot of code, they would kind of get uh, alerted by the noise. Uh, but they wouldn't actually engage the character in the same in the same way. Now what I've set up is that when you actually encounter that first uh, chase and it starts building up that level, the world will start to notice you and come down on you. So your only option once you've encountered that is to clear the area. Now I've also tried to set up to where uh, if you encounter the world um, inside the newest version, you'll notice that there are less screamers inside the world, and this is by design. Um, basically, I've tried to make this to where as you're traveling through the world, you have a much uh, less version or less chance of running into a uh, howler, um, and so those will also be a more rare incident. Um, to where you shouldn't see those as often. You'll notice that my wall run is also shorter. That is one of the things that has been changed uh, with the heavy armor. So the heavy armor has not been implemented on all the armor sets right now. So it's very much a test uh, system that is only on the Renegade armor. Uh, and so I'll continue to be at, uh, adding that functionality before the release of 1.1. So as we move through the world, I need to go and uh, find the groups the actual cell update. So what's happening here is that basically we have not gone far enough to where it has actually become night. So the area that I was in was very much a daytime area um, and it's slowly kind of turning into night, but it's, uh, it's not quite there. You can usually tell because the area will actually be flooded uh, and also you should have more uh, of the howls. So here we go. So in the ultimate version, uh, you should see that 
um, you will have uh, the icon begin to not show up. You can see here on Survivor, I think I've, uh, I've got a glitch there to where it's also not showing up. But so we've now entered uh, chase mode. And so you can see here as we start to go through the world, all of the biters in this area um, now turn to notice the player. So as you're moving through the environment, they're all noticing you and, uh, and heading your way. This makes a major difference when you are playing Ultimate Survivor. So I've tried to keep those volatile numbers still pretty low um, because now the entire map is reacting to the player. And so because of that, um, your chances of getting out of that area are, are much less. Uh, and so because of that, I've tried to even that out. So as you can see, there's not as many uh, howlers inside the environment. If we continue to let them scream, uh, we continue to allow those special infected to spawn as well. So this is really where having that heavy armor um, comes into play. So you probably, as the mod continues, you're probably going to want to actually aim for medium armor uh, so that you get a, a good balance between uh, protection, but then also still being able to move through the environment at a faster rate. So my, my run times are slower, my climbing is slower, and so my ability to get grabbed is much higher, um, but I also have the ability to retain more hits uh, before I actually die. So uh, I will also point out for those of you watching uh, that this is using the end game. So this is when the game is fully completed uh, on this save. Uh, so you will not have as many of these challenges early on in the game. Uh, so this is mainly starting at the, or in this video, it's mainly at the conclusion of the game. Now, as you can see, uh, it's only kind of a matter of time until you start to use uh, the world to, uh, to actually escape. So that glider uh, and everything is no longer as much of an option. It's a very brief uh, way to get higher, but uh, won't allow you to coast through the entire city uh, to get away. So here, if we can make it over here, you'll see an example of that. So basically, because you jump lower, you need to time it just right. <laughs> that actually worked out. So from here, I'm up higher so I can actually kind of figure out where on the map I can go to get to a base. And actually, I just noticed an issue with the icons. Uh, so I think there's actually a small bug inside the icon file. So I'll make sure to fix that before release. Um, but the idea here is, is that you can still play the game. You can still get back. Again, this is for in-game content. Um, but the few new conf uh, considerations when you're playing the game, and I wanted to share kind of the process and what I've been designing uh, on this side. So. Hope you guys enjoy the changes. If you guys have any feedback there, um, I look forward to hearing it. I am actively designing this with the goal of, of keeping you guys in mind. Uh, and so as you guys see things, as you want to try different things or uh, change things, just let me know. Uh, and I'll continue to try to improve those things. Okay, guys, uh, I think that's pretty much it for the main part of the gameplay. As I mentioned, for the different versions uh, of the difficulty, each th each one of these things ch slightly changes. Uh, before release, I will go ahead and fix the charger code um, error, and so you shouldn't see that as often inside the city. I guess I'm going to have to go down to like 1% chance on him uh, so that we can try to get that balance back out. But the idea here is that inside this world, Armor is now greatly populated. Um, you have to go out into the world and find those changes uh, to be able to experience that. So I'm going to go ahead and exit the game really quickly, and uh, let's go ahead and talk about getting to the configuration. So for the configuration file, I've been meaning to go and do this tutorial for a little bit, so let me go ahead and run through this. Um, basically, inside of the mod, uh, you have your data3 file, and you're put, you, you've put your data3 uh, in your installed directory into the ph source. If you open your data3.pack, so you can see I'm, I'm using WinRare to open this up. 
if you go ahead and open this up, once you've actually installed WinRare or 7-Zip or whatever it is, you need to associate that file type uh, or right click and say open with. Once you get in there, you'll see there is this uh, AIL underscore settings dot MTH. Basically what this is is a configuration file that's injecting settings into the world. Uh, if you want to go through and make any changes or, uh, or anything to this file, uh, all you have to do is extract that file. Um, or if you double click here, you can go and set that up as a default uh, with any of your text editors. You should, once you open that up, you should see so over here on the right side is the actual configuration file. Through here, I've gone through and I've done an update. I've tried to go through and clean this up. Uh, if you scroll down, you can see um, that the formatting kind of changes part of the way down. Uh, that's because I have not fully made it all the way through my re restructure here. Um, so I believe down to AI difficulty is probably as far as I've gotten so far um, for all of the restructuring. But basically what you can do is go through here and see some of the settings that I have set up as default. Um, inside of here, I'm also trying to go through and say what the default is and then what I'm also using for the different settings. So if you wanna go through and make any of these changes yourself, you can. Um, with some of these things, you have to be work, you have to be careful because for example, with this like night XP action reward. So basically this is a reward that happens anytime you do actions at night. If I went in here and did something like 9999, um, this may cause crashes in the game. I, I don't know how they have every single one of their scalers set up um, for these different values. So I would encourage that you not go in here and set every one of these things to like 999. Uh, for the ones that, so you have float values and you have integer values. Um, if it says float, make sure that you're doing this zero dot and then another uh, integer. Uh, basically, you just can't go in here and do something like one. Uh, that's not correct. You need to do something like 1.0 for that float value to be uh, accurate. Um, for integer values, so here you can see export integer. Uh, here you can set something like three to, you know, whatever, whatever number you want there. Um, but try to pay attention to the specific values that it's setting there. Uh, if it says something like bool, uh, then it has to be true or false, and it has to be all capitalized. So make sure that if you're going in here, in here and change these, make sure you're going in there and setting these with like true with all, uh, all caps. Okay guys, uh, one main one that I will share here, uh, this is probably the most common one asked. Uh, so probably the biggest one is the spawn and density settings inside the game. If you wanna go and make more zombies inside your world, uh, it's very easy. You can open up the configuration file, go down to spawn and density. Uh, and in here, you can see here that we have the daytime, we have the nighttime. Um, it does not include the interior values. The interior values are currently hard coded, uh, but this is all of the external values. You can go in here and for example, if we want more zombies to spawn during the day, I can go in here and lower this number. So higher numbers means less, lower means more. So I can go in here and set this to something like one and it will greatly by three times double or triple the amount of zombies inside the game. Uh, so for each one of these values, if you wanna go in there and change it to where you're just doubling down, tripling down on every value, feel free. Uh, I currently have it set up to where it's a little bit more lore friendly to where there's less zombies during the day, more at night. If you wanna change that up, mix that up, feel free. Um, and then for the screamers, there's this spawn logic. Down here is this special spawn distance. Basically, this is the distance between uh, where I'm allowing the amount of screamers to spawn. If you want there to be more screamers in the game, go ahead and lower this number. This is the distance between them. Lower this something to like 50 and 100 if you want. Uh, and then that should equal way more um, howlers inside the game. Uh, but make sure that you never, with all min and max numbers, make sure your max is always greater than your minimum number or you will, you will experience crashes. Okay, guys, I think that's pretty much a, an overhead. Feel free to crawl through. I have tried to go through and add notes to specific ones. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, you know, you can reach out to me on the Discord. Uh, thank you guys so much for your support for the mod. More updates are coming. And like I mentioned, I'll go through and fix a few minor bugs again uh, before you guys get to this latest version. All right, thanks, guys.